What's going on everyone? It's Tian here coming back at you with another video again using my brand new Canon T3i DSLR and this video is going to be comparing the 2013 MacBook Airs both the i5 version versus the i7 version. I did get both um, this summer. The one on the left is my mom's 2013 MacBook Air i5 4 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD uh, PCI based uh, SSD and on the right is my 2013 MacBook Air with the Core i7 processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of SSD. So my mom's cost about 1,250 bucks out the door at Best Buy. We got a pretty good deal, especially since it's the 256 SSD version. Uh, my mom, uh, I mean, my own custom configured one on the right with the i7 and 8 gigs of RAM upgrade cost about 1,600 out the door, but it did come with a $100 iTunes gift card which I sold on Craigslist, so I basically paid about 1500 for it. Um, I'm an engineering major, and I do make YouTube videos from time to time, so I felt, you know, why not pay a little bit extra right now and get the extra horsepower for the next couple years. So, anyways, um, I did have a tough time going, you know, i5 or i7, I mean, should I future-proof it, or is it worth, like, is it not worth, you know, like, spending, what, about 300 no, uh, 250 bucks extra after I sold the iTunes gift card. Um, is it worth $250 extra? Um, so this video is for you guys to help you guys because I faced this problem and hopefully this video will help you face your issue and basically help you side with um, which uh, processor is probably better for you. So the first test we're going to be doing is Geekbench. Now Geekbench is a benchmarking tool uh, that will help us basically see how the performance between these two computers um, scale on a on a standardized sort of scale, um, Geekbench is a fairly popular program and it'll basically give us a, a standardized score between both of the two machines to compare the performance. Alright, so I have Geekbench 2 full version loaded on both computers. We're going to be running the 64GB Intel processor Geekbench benchmark. Let, let's get it. Ah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to click on them at the same time so you can even see which one finishes faster and both of them have started. You can see the 13 inch uh, i7 processor MacBook Air is actually going significantly faster than the i5 one. Sorry, hopefully you guys can see the screen just fine on the camera. Alright, so you can see the MacBook Air with the i7 finished relatively faster. Uh, the i5 MacBook Air is still running. Alright, and there we go, both have finished. So the MacBook Air with the i7 processor finished uh, just a little bit faster than the i5 processor. Again, this isn't that big of a deal. But we did manage to score 8,694 on the i7 processor, which is pretty darn good if I can say so myself. I mean, this laptop is super thin, and with the i7, it really just powers through and gives some pretty good performance. 8,694 is not bad at all. And now the i5 model gave us a score of 7,084. And so uh, that's, again, not bad at all. Um, this is both the i5 with the 4 gigs of RAM, so you do have to put that into um, play here as well. Alright guys, so I got Final Cut Pro 10 open on both machines. We're going to be doing a quick render test to see how both stack, stack up uh, while rendering the same video file. It's about a 500 megabyte file. We're going to be rendering in Final Cut Pro 10.0.5. Uh, so this will, again, help us uh, get an idea of how um, the processor on each works, um, whether, you know, the time difference in rendering is significant or not. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and hit render on the two computers at the same time. Alright, there we go, guys. Both files have started rendering. You can see the i7 MacBook is at 5%. Uh, the i5 is actually keeping up just fine. It's also at 8%, 9%. 
uh, i7s at 12. So you can see there's a slight significance, I mean, maybe 1-2% to at the most, um, so far at least, so far. So let me go ahead and zoom for you guys and see how the percentage is. There's the percentage on the i7. It's about about 40%. Now the i5 is starting to slow down a little bit. It's at about 37%, while the i7 is at 47. So uh, a difference, a gap is starting to emerge here. Uh, the file has popped up on the i7, but it's not fully done render. Oh, just kidding! It is. It's at 100%. Now let's see. It's finished rendering at uh, on the i7. Let's see how long it takes. All right, there we go. All right, so the file has rendered on both. You guys could see it wasn't that big of a difference, maybe 30 seconds to a minute tops. Now, obviously, you're going to see the gap uh, widen more and more as the file size becomes larger and larger, especially if you're shooting in the RAW format for DSLRs. But you can see both have rendered just fine. Both look great. Um, you can see the video playing on both. Uh, and it seems to work just fine uh, on both machine guys. So what, here's my final verdict. I would say if you're not a professional in this sort of stuff, I mean, obviously, if you don't use Photoshop too often, if you don't, if you don't, you know, render videos too often, I would say stay with the i5. Now, of course, <clears throat> if you're taking the MacBook to school, you want to play the occasional game, like from the Mac App Store, you want to play Call of Duty, you want to play Grand Theft Auto, the extra horsepower could come in handy. I mean, at the end of the day, the graphics card is still the same. It's the Intel HD 5000 integrated integrated uh, graphics card. So again, it may not make that much of a difference, but the extra horsepower will surely help. Uh, so if you're going to be someone who's going to be gaming a little, just a little bit, you know, lightweight gaming, or video rendering or doing Photoshop, I would say, you know what, go ahead and get the i7 just to future proof it. You're gonna use the laptop for the next three to four years, so may as well um, have that extra horsepower handy. Whereas if you're someone who's like my mom, just browses the web all the time, um, you know, Facebook, email, Yahoo, um, just Facebook chatting, simple stuff, uh, photo sharing, just looking at photos, just that simple sort of stuff. And I would say the i5 is more than enough for you guys, and that's what I would recommend. So based on these two needs, you have to identify what you guys, which category you kind of fall into, and therefore kind of go from there. So anyways, guys, this is a quick video on the comparison uh, performance-wise between the i5 and the i7. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys also enjoyed the new quality from the camera. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you guys enjoyed the new quality, please, please hit the thumbs up down below. It really helps me a lot. And it's what keeps me uh, going, helps me make more videos. So please hit the like button. It's seriously appreciated. And subscribe to see more quality videos like this. And again, uh, again comment down below to let me know what you thought of the video. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you next time. Bye.